Yes, and I'm in you can announce live, it for I'm live with uh, Ricky. Ah, great, great, great. And uh, there will be live now? Or? They are already live, okay. Yeah. The Q&A for Extraordinary will start in a few minutes. So gather around here and come and watch the Q&A with the guests. So come and have a look everybody for the Q&A of Extraordinary starting in a few minutes. Le Q&A de Extraordinary commencera dans quelques minutes.
Hiya. Mike. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. So come gather, gather around for the Q&A of uh, Extraordinary. We will start in two minutes. Le Q&A de Extraordinary commencera dans deux petites minutes. So, welcome for the Q&A of Extraordinary. We are a little bit delayed because of the rafting, but that's okay, I guess. Um, so, we, are, we have the guests here, uh, Mike Ahern Ah 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 and uh, Enda Lothman. Uh, well, thank you for being here. Um, well, my first question is really a simple one. Do you believe in ghosts? Uh, yes. Is that not clear from having seen the movie? Well, I had the impression that you did, but I wanted to be sure. No, I definitely do. Okay. And how about you? I definitely don't. Okay. <laughs> That's an interesting combination. <laughs> you need conflict in your script. Okay, really? Is, is it really? Did that, did, does that bring conflict somehow? Or? Uh, I was just joking. But okay, yeah, we're joking. It, it, helps, it, it could helps. be. It could yeah. be. I mean, it if helps, you have yeah. real... If you have a real believer, then of course there's probably differences in I don't, opinion. I don't not believe, I've just never seen one, so I will wait till I see one. Me neither. So. <laughs> um, so well, it was it was a hilarious movie, I had a lot of fun. I can imagine that you had a lot of fun making it. Yes, uh, we had a lot of fun making it up, and then making it was... Uh, we only had, you know, 25 days, and it was a very hard shoot, especially when you're making comedy, mm -hmm. to find a time to get it all made. I think my head is too big. But um, yeah, we had, I think the, the crew were amazing and the cast were amazing and they had a brilliant time, but me and Enda were very worried all the time to try and make sure that we had the, finish, the film finished in time. So for us it was kind of stressful, for everybody else it was a big party and it was uh, lots of laughing and you know, lots of jokes. But you said that it took like 25 days to make it, but I, I assume that it took a lot more time to get until you started shooting. How, how did that go and how long did that take? Uh, about four years since we wrote the film, the first draft, to when we shot. Okay. And you both wrote the script. And uh, since you're directing together, is there... Uh, 
is there a focus that each of you has that, that you look into and that the other one has on different things? Not really. I, it's quite shared. It's a democracy. Okay. There's only two votes, though. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, it's generally quite... Uh, we do 50-50. I mean, it's a lot. It's, it is um, definitely... When, when we're writing, I suppose we kind of share the writing. He'd write a scene, I'd write a scene, and then we switch around mm -hmm. and read them and change them. And I think then when it comes to shooting, I suppose we just are collaborative in a way that I suppose we just, we always, <clears throat> I think we usually are each other's barometer in a way that like if we, one of us thinks it's good and one thinks it's bad, then maybe it's bad, but if we both think it's bad, it's probably good. And if we both think it's good, it's probably bad. Does that make sense? Um, I'm you... processing. <laughs> it's like a double, yeah, I double negative. Yeah, it, uh, yeah I, again. Um, you say you covered it together, yeah. but um, Maeve Higgins and um, Damien Fox are also credited That's for right. writing the movie. When they, de when they, when they, did they get involved in writing? Uh, well, Maeve is obviously in the movie, so she was involved from the very beginning, and we always knew she would have some input into the, particularly the scenes that she is in, and uh, she wrote some of her own dialogue, and she had, um, you know, she was. Yeah, so she, she helped us throughout, and then Damien was kind of, he was like a script doctor, somebody who we kind of shared it with, and he helped us with the, the order and uh, trimming bits, and he, he was more like um, an editor, a script editor in some ways. Um, um, Maeve, um, the chosen from the very beginning yeah. when you wrote? We um, wrote it with her in mind. She, she's a friend of ours going back years, so, okay. and she's a stand-up comedian. And we just knew she'd be really good in a film, so we actually wrote the film for her. Okay, and um, is it easy for a stand-up comedian to uh, be full camera, or did you have to direct her? It, I think it was hard for her, actually. She, was, she had never done it before. She had done some sketch kind of comedy stuff, but never really drama like that. Is it drama? Maybe it is. She had to, I think the hardest thing was learning so much dialogue, because she is in every single scene in the film. And uh, I think it's like such a big thing to jump into. Um, so that was the hardest thing. But because it was written so specifically for her with her accent and her voice, uh, the character was already there. It was more about the, you know, the pressure and the technical parts of it that were for her were the tricky parts. But after a week, she just kind of knew what she was doing. And I mean, she's uh, very, you can see she's very good in the film. So. <laughs> So this was your first full feature, am I right? And you've you come you've come from uh, shorts, music videos, and commercials. How does that compare to this uh, in your experience? And what is um, what are the challenges that you have here that you don't have uh, in general? Well, I think the biggest difference is probably time and money. <laughs> Because commercials obviously tend to have a lot more money, um, mm -hmm. and they're only—I mean, we would probably have had made commercials that are only 30 seconds long that probably had half the budget of that movie, which is an hour and a half. So you can kind of <laughs> imagine what the difference would be, particularly in time, um, the amount of time you have to shoot, and also not having to please other people is refreshing. Yeah, when we, when we write for ourselves and then you're used to um, having somebody on set, like a, in a, when you're making a commercial, you have to show the client or the ad agency or whatever. So they're the things that we need to let go when we're making our own stuff, that there's nobody watching over us. To, so that's the beauty of uh, making your own film, obviously. So, so this became your real baby, yes. but still, there might be things that you thought you should have done different. Is there something that you say like, could have done that different. Yes, there's lots of small things, but at, at this point, it's sort of, it's, it's like having a baby, I guess. There's like, you forget the pain of, um, of different days. We had some really, uh, the big set pieces that, that were in the castle at the end of the film. We only had like four days to film all of that stuff. So at the end of each day, we were behind. So then that would be pushed on to the next day, and then a day would be behind. So by the end, on the last day, no matter what, we had to leave the castle. Uh, we didn't have, you know, we didn't have enough time to get everything. So we were just editing in your head, going, "Okay, we will be doing this. This shot will be in the film. This shot will be in the film. We'll let that go. We'll let that go." Having time for two takes or three max, 
I mean, the, the, the difference is you don't, you don't have time to realize that maybe you're fucking up or that <laughs> the takes aren't good enough because you just have to do the next scene and you, you don't have time to think about was it good enough or not. You just need to, did they say the words on the page? Yes, let's go. <laughs> and also, I think when we, you spend a few years writing something and so if we write a page of dialogue or a scene, um, you know, you could spend a month on one like comedy sketch or whatever from the film and then we have 15 minutes to film that same thing that we spent, you know, a month or three months writing. <laughs> so it's, just, it's very sad to watch it go. <laughs> but it's also, you know, exciting. It's, everything's, it, it, it changes all the time. Um, is there a specific part um, in the script that didn't make it to the movie? Or uh, a specific part in the movie that didn't make uh, the final cut that you actually really wanted to include? There was definitely some scenes in the script that aren't in the film, but uh, it's mostly the scenes were, were longer. We knew we knew it was too long, but we wanted to shoot more than was going to be end up in the movie. We knew it would be an hour and a half, and our script was probably an hour and I think our rough minutes. our rough cut was two hours and five minutes. Uh, that had every single thing we shot in it, um, but because it's a comedy, you want to have more jokes because you know not every joke will work. So you go, okay, we'll put everything in and then see which ones are the best. And you, you know, it's a, it's a fight. But I don't think there's any full scene, not in the film, that, you know, that we shot. Everything is there. There is. The, uh, the band of kids. Yeah. Mike's wrong. Yeah, I'm right. So maybe there's a few questions in the audience, but we're also live on YouTube. So if you're watching us live on YouTube, you can ask your questions in the chat and we will respond to them as well. Do we have someone in the audience here? Uh, hello. Uh, so first of all, I would like to thank you for, to, uh, for the movie because I think it was an awesome movie. So very great, great stuff. So you said that you are a stand-up comedian. So, did you make some improvisation also during the set, or not? Um, uh, Maeve is a stand-up comedian. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, she did a bit, yeah, but it was mostly the script that she stuck to it, more or less. But because, like Mike was saying, she's not actually a professional actor, so she had trouble remembering her lines. She would mostly just kind of roughly say the same thing, but it was never exactly the same twice. But uh, that was probably a good thing because it, you know, it felt. It meant that the takes would be different as well, so they wouldn't all be exactly the same. So yeah, I suppose there was a bit, but not, not, a, not a tremendous amount. Ah oui, pardon. Excusez-moi, Mike et Enda. Je vais poser votre question, ma question en français. Oh, on est européen, hein, donc le français c'est ça va quoi. Voilà. Donc, quoi bah, alors to the point. Voilà, je voulais savoir. Aujourd'hui on est vendredi saint, Holy Friday. C'est important dans la religion. Est-ce que vous n'êtes pas un peu honteux Est-ce que vous n'êtes pas un peu gêné de, de montrer un film avec des vampires, avec pardon, avec des, des fantômes, avec le diable, avec tout ça devant devant nous enfin, enfin, au, au lieu d'aller à l'église et prier enfin, à un moment donné il faut quand même remettre les choses dans ces contextes on est à Pâques quoi on monte pas un film comme ça à Pâques il faudrait être gêné quoi qu'est-ce que vous me répondez là s'il vous plaît ça ne va pas Um, wh well, why were you at the film? Why weren't you at church and praying? Also, we were we were, we were both also. Uh, Enda was Enda was a priest for five years. Hail uh, Satan! And Enda was a priest for five years. He studied to be a priest, and um, after he finished the priesthood, uh, he met me and we started a band, and that's uh, that's how uh, he fell away from the priesthood. So I think he, you still pray on Good Friday, do you? 
Yeah. I do, yeah. whilst eating lots of meat. He had fish today. We have one question online uh, by Roo. Uh, he's asking, why did you choose a comedian instead of an actress for the movie? What was the deal? Well, there was no choice involved because she was always going to be, the, be in the movie. Like, we wrote the part for her. So it wasn't really a choice. When we, when we thought of the, the character, we thought of her. And we went, she, we will get Maeve. Higgins to play this character. There was never anybody else. There was no casting. There was no audition. It was just this is Maeve, and from the first thing we wrote, it was in her voice. So she, she when she does stand up, she has a certain voice, uh, it's like kind of a character version of herself, and that's kind of what we wrote the character like. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I hope that's uh, that answers Rule's question on uh, YouTube. Um, I kind of also asked the other question is what would, you, what would you what would you change if you could do it over but I also asked if you learned some things but is, is there something that you might say that we would do different if we would do it again probably um, <laughs> I, but what <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of things I mean there's certain like shots that if I was shooting them again I would probably go okay well we we should just favor this shot, on the day you make decisions and you go, this one's important or this one's important. Um, so there's probably like close-ups that we could have got here or there that we didn't get. But I mean, that's sort of independent filmmaking. You just have to like see what happens and then put it together afterwards, you know? So I guess there, I think the thing we learned most was uh, uh, the script is really important. If you go in with a good script, uh, uh, you hopefully have a good film or you have a chance of making a good film at least and uh, uh, if you go in with holes, any holes in the script that we, ha that we thought were holes that we would fix later are still holes now <laughs> so you need to make sure that they're good before you, you know, go in so there's small, small details like that I think uh, is what we learned but the story, so we've talked about uh, how, how it happened that the actress or the stand-up comedian became the role, but how did the story begin? How did you two guys thought of like, hey, this is something we need to make? How did, how did that happen? So because you were different people. Who came up with the initial idea? Well, the first thing was we were trying to think of an idea that we could make for not too much money, like a kind of... And then also I had read this article uh, about uh, a haunted old, old folks home in, in, in England. And in the haunted old folks home, it was like in a crappy newspaper article and it was like supposed to be funny. And there was a like ghost coming at night that was like groping the old women, like touching the old women. And, uh, <laughs> sorry. And, uh, but in the article, I didn't think that was very funny, but in the article it mentioned two ghost hunters that came to help. And they uh, had, uh, during, by day they had like real jobs. One worked in a bank and one worked as a lorry driver. And then th at night they would go and like help people with hauntings. So then we started talking and we were like, well, you know, wh wh what's their origin story? How did they meet? You know, who are these people that are so ordinary but also so extraordinary? And I guess that's kind of where the whole idea came from, showing their very ordinary life during the day and then the crazy, stupid, weird ghost hunting life at night. Well, it's, yeah. it's real, right? Yeah. Well, there's real people who do it, so. Based on the true story. <laughs> I believe you. Um, so, um, in the movie, Rosa Scar kind of acts like a transition in between scenes, and it's almost like... Um, it's a character on its own. It has its own part. Um, was it done on purpose, or is it just something that happened during mo filming? Rose's car is like a character. Yeah, it was very much uh, written in the script, and even in the um, the visuals that we collected before we made the film, we always had this exact car in mind, this type of car, uh, the Ford Fiesta, an old one and a, a kind of a red one. And I guess for us, it was a little bit like a nod to Ghostbusters and those kind of, you know, or the Batmobile, <laughs> that uh, she has a, you know, a car that's her own, but it's also sort of a, maybe a hangover from her dad, because, like, uh, it's a very old car, so it's, we imagine that it's her dad's car, and he did it 
his job in that car too, so it has this kind of like, you know, heart back to her past. So I guess that's the character. The casting of all the other characters, because you had one person in mind, but uh, I assume you didn't have all the others in mind. We <laughs> did, actually. Okay, then. <laughs> Next no, question? Not, not all of them, but we had Sailor, her sister, and Claudia O'Doherty, Will's wife. Mm -hmm. They were always going to be in it because we know them as friends, and uh, we knew Claudia, and Claudia is a good friend of Maeve's, so we actually wrote that part for her, and that's why her, the name of the character is Claudia, even. <laughs> But then we did have to cast for Barry Ward as Martin Martin, and also for um, Will Forte, who, you know, we had so many actors that we thought could do it, but, you know, when Will said he would, we were shocked and <laughs> delighted. Yeah. We were very big fans of Will Forte from watching other movies that he's been in and also his comedy. And, um, we, got, we managed to get the script to him and he read it and really liked it and we were very shocked. <laughs> and then it just worked out from a time point of view that he was free and he really liked Ireland as a country. He had been there a few times. So he took that in mind when he was reading the script also. And um, uh, he just, we Skyped with him and we got on well with him over on Skype. We joked and he was, thought it was really funny. So he was just like, let's do this. We we're like, okay. <laughs> And so all in all, that was a really easy casting process. Uh, sort of. Yeah, it took a while, but mostly, yeah. yeah, generally it was. Yeah, and then Barry Ward, who is, plays Martin Martin, he's sort of like the straight man in a way, and, and he's a very amazing dramatic actor. Uh, he was in like a Ken Loach movie and lots of you know uh, real films, real real movies as we call them, not stupid movies it's like our real movies. <laughs> um, and then Barry Barry came on board. First, he he didn't even read the script, and he said no. And then uh, we, watched, we watched something else that he was in and we sent it to him again. And we are like, we think you'll be good, uh, read it. And then he read it and he really laughed a lot. And, um, and then he started sending us videos of him as different characters, as all the, the ghosts. And as soon as he started doing that, we were like, yeah, he's perfect. Yeah. Okay, great. Who calls his son like Martin Martin? There must be some inside joke behind that name. No, it's just he was we, he was called Martin for a long time, and then we were we th we think that uh, this is me. Sorry if there's any Martins here, but Martin is for us is a very uh, the most kind of normal name in Ireland. It's very like not, I won't boring. say boring. Well, I guess I will say I'll boring. say boring. Boring name. So then we thought, how could you make him more boring? This his name is Martin Martin. Because it's also a surname in Ireland. So, Martin Martin. <laughs> there was one thing that I really thought was like crazy funny. It's the exploding. Hmm? Only one. No, there's one, one thing that really stood out. Only that one. I couldn't keep my. No, no, there's, there's one on the top. There, okay. yeah, the yeah, mountain yeah. has one top. Yeah. Okay. So, that's the exploding people. How, how, how do you come to that? How did that happen? <laughs> I think we were trying to think of, uh, in English that's quite a funny joke because it's a, a goat that floats. So it's a gloating, a floating goat. So it rhymes in a weird way. It's a portmanteau. Um, when you put two words together, a portmanteau. So <laughs> Sorry, a what? Portmanteau, surely it's a French word. Ah, yeah. Portmanteau, that's all. Portmanteau. <laughs> uh, but uh, we needed a way to show the um, what would happen to the virgin if, uh, if if the if the spell went wrong. So we decided to do it with a goat first. So that's where it came from. Goat goats are always Satan-y. Satan likes goats. Like Baphomet. Yeah, but I, lo I looked at Lucifer and he Bl says, like, Black yeah, that's not true. Yeah. <laughs> the witch, the witch, uh, what's his name? Black Philip or... Pr yeah, Black Philip. So maybe we can go to the audience one more time and see if there's someone who has a question. Or if you are online, uh, there might be another question in the chat as well. We have someone here in the front. Hello. Hi. So you say the actor who played Martin Martin sent you... Um, recordings of him playing several different dead people. 
Uh, were there some of them you didn't use? And did some of those performances actually convince you even more to use him? Because obviously you already chose him as an actor before. But uh, did those serve you to be even more certain about casting him? Uh, I think what he brought mostly was uh, the accents and the voices to the characters as they were written was different. So especially Martin's wife. Uh, we had a voice in our heads, you know, when we were writing. And then his interpretation of that voice was quite different and it made us laugh a lot. And it's like from a certain region of Ireland that's quite funny as well. If you know the region, it's even funnier. Um, and then uh, to watch him going um, just on like a, a Skype, he would put on glasses and like uh, do, the, do the voice with, with a cigarette and it was a big transformation and we, we knew straight away that he was great. Um, with regards to uh, more characters in the, in the script, we, everything that's in the script is on the film. Uh, we couldn't afford to do any extra and, and have them not on the film. Also, I thought that Irish people usually have sex on average more, on more seconds than uh, in your film, so, or I would hope so. So, or is this a or is this a recurrent thing that people manage to have sex in that limited amount of time in Ireland? We want to know. He was under pressure. He had a job to do, and he needed to do it in that space of time. I thought that he, was quite long. <laughs> he had from here to the pole over there, and you know he knew what he had to do, and he did it. You <laughs> Europeans, it for it. like a sportsman. imagery in your movie is um, very interesting. It kind of made me um, think of like if a modern like TV show and like a Hammer horror movie had a child. Um, could you talk a little bit more about that? Uh, that was deliberate. I think especially the, the, all the red light and stuff was very influenced by Hammer. And then we... The, one of the main references for the inside of the house, I don't think it really looks like it because it's not... Southern California in 1980, but was uh, poltergeist to make the house and the colors on the walls and all. We tried to make it, not that we tried to make it look like that, but that was the vibe we tried to create, it, especially in Martin's house. And I, I don't actually think it looks anything like it, but that was sort of uh, where it came from. And also we, uh, the Coen brothers are a massive influence on us generally. And we looked at a lot of movies that were lit uh, with like practical lights, which they do on the interiors of the houses. So there, it's always lamps and not very much natural light, it's all practical lights. So we tried to use a lot of that in the, the way we lit the shots. But we collected a lot, a lot of references over a couple of years. Um, there's a photographer called Todd Hedo as well, um, an American photographer, and we, he photographs houses, exteriors of houses at night. Um, and he was a big reference for us. So, this audience must have been a first for you guys, because this yeah, is your first feature. Mental. Yeah. It was super, yeah. What, yeah, what, what goes through your mind when <laughs> that happens? What goes through their minds? <laughs> That's what I want to know. Don't ask. We, we had, <laughs> yeah, we had so much fun. We were up, in the bal we were up high in the balcony okay. just watching it. Uh, just, it felt amazing, yeah. And uh, just even when they started singing again during the Ole Ole, we were very happy. <laughs> it worked. Yeah, they take it over. Eh? Yeah, yeah. When you say something, yeah. But it, it, <laughs> it, felt, uh, it felt great. And then um, obviously there's lots of in-jokes with the moon and, you know, so much. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Woo. So, uh, we, yeah, we enjoyed it. As horror fans, it's a nice feeling as well. Does it feel like you want to make something new after this and make another project to come here? Certainly, yeah. We we definitely have a few things in, in our brains that we're ready to uh, go with, yes. And also something that you can elaborate on? Uh, not too much. We wrote a film before, um, before this film mm -hmm. called The Bogman King, which is uh, about a, uh, a guy who digs up a bog body. We have these bog bodies in Ireland, which are like kind of um, mummies that are in the bog, mm -hmm. uh, which is like a, a marsh in the middle of the country. And uh, they're preserved for a very long time, um, like a thousand years. And this farmer in our film digs, digs one up, it's a comedy again. And uh, 
He digs it up and it uh, comes back to life and it's a Viking uh, mummy. And he, uh, he finds out where it's from and it's from a small town in Norway called Bergen. And then he, they get in the car and they just drive to Bergen. So the film is the two of them, like a road movie with a zombie Viking and a guy a zombie becoming road friends. Movie. Yeah. Tom Hanks is interested. <laughs> oh, really? And Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah? Jennifer Lawrence as the Viking zombie. And we're going to get Scorsese to direct. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Netflix are putting out 200 million. Yeah, Netflix as well. <laughs> um, well, it's going to be in Cannes 2021. <laughs> but here first, here first. Here for yeah, I was gonna say yeah, definitely here first. So I don't know if you have any questions, Letitia. Um, the only thing I really want to ask is, are you happy in your like marriage? Because like, <laughs> Bonnie and um, like the wives in this movie look very controlling. So like, guys. Are you okay? Isn't this like a cry for help? Because you can tell us. I mean, in our we'll marriage. Save you. Oh, really? Yeah. Who of you is a controlling wife? <laughs> That's me. I, I am the lady in the relationship, definitely. <laughs> And you feel okay with that? I feel great. Yeah, I have love with you. He's haunting me. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if there's any last question in the audience I see someone pointing here but no not, not really well, thank you I'm, I'm out of questions really and uh, so thanks I YouTube <laughs> merci beaucoup so thank you very much and can I have a last big applause and uh, see you next time donc avant que vous vous approchiez pour signer les autographes j'aimerais euh, Remercier les deux réalisateurs. I wanted to thank you. Thank you so much for coming to the festival. And uh, yeah, the Book of Dead, if you want to sign something for us. And thank you again. And we really hope you're going to come back with another movie.